Let's start our water cycle with precipitation. That's when water comes out of the air from clouds and falls down to the ground in the form of rain or snow. On the ground, liquid water from rain or melted snow flows down over the surface of the land into rivers, lakes, and oceans. When the sun heats up liquid water on land or in lakes or oceans, evaporation takes place. With heat, the water turns from a liquid form to a gas form and goes into the air, like the way that puddles evaporate after a rainstorm. Once the water is back in the air, it eventually undergoes condensation. That's when it cools and forms clouds. The clouds move as the wind pushes them to new places. When the conditions are right, the clouds release the water they're carrying in the form of rain or snow, precipitation, and the water returns to the ground. The cycle begins again. Over time, all the water on Earth goes through this cycle, from air to land, gas to liquid, over and over. That's the simple version of the water cycle. If we look closer at what happens when water falls to the ground, we realize that there are many paths water can take on land. We already talked about how some of the water flows over the surface into rivers, lakes, or oceans. Some of the water that falls as rain or melts from snow soaks into the ground, into the soil. Plants pull water from the soil to live and grow. Most of the water they pull from the soil is then released into the air, a process called evapotranspiration. Some of the water sinks deep into the soil to become what we call groundwater under the surface of the land. And some of the water travels through cracks in mountains or rocks to fill large, deep underground basins called aquifers. The water cycle brings water to the land and makes life on land possible. We depend on the water cycle, and so do all the plants and animals around us. So next time you take a drink of water or marvel at the beauty of a flower, remember the water cycle.